Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Our first order of business is be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors hereby enters into a work session for the purpose of discussing the following FY 2015 2016 proposed budget to Shawsdale Middle School Fields. Do we have a motion, please? Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Call simple clerk. Supervisor Creed? Yeah. Supervisor King? Aye. Supervisor Biggs? Aye. Supervisor Perkins? Aye. Supervisor Chuck? Aye. Supervisor Gabriel? Let's go to work session. Yes. Hey. Uh, Chair Brown? Aye. Seven items. We're in work session. Okay. Good evening, folks. Um, Appreciate everybody coming together tonight to, to cover a couple of topics. We thought we'd do this tonight to maybe not bog down the, the board meeting that we have coming up the following Monday. The first item of business is an update on the fiscal on the fiscal year 2016 proposed budget. We want to talk to you about a couple of issues uh, as a follow up from the presentation from last week. Mark's going to handle that, so Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about um, the budget. You've had about a week to look at the budget, and there's a lot of information to digest. So I wanted to highlight a few things that we actually have in the budget, a few things that are not in the budget, and sort of clarify some issues that are going on there. First thing I want to talk about is uh, state funds that we included in the proposed budget. The General Assembly Conference Report came out in the last week while we were preparing the budget document. So there were a few things that we were able to get in the proposed document, and there were a few things that we were not able to get in there, and that was due to information that we didn't have at the time that the conference report came out. So I want to talk about state funds that are actually in the proposed budget. And things that we included uh, based on the conference report, the state flexible cuts, which we've talked about in the past, were restored, and that was $159,844,000. Of that amount, around $98,000 in additional revenue was included in the budget. And the reason there's a difference between the 98 and the 159 is, is that there are certain dollars that are for entities that are outside the general fund budget, such as um, the juvenile detention home, there's state recreation uh, revenues that affect the schools, and then there's CSA, which is a sum sufficient program. So we netted those off uh, of, of the difference, and that's why only 98000 was added back. And then there were some additional changes uh, for locally supported state employees, which was a 2% compensation increase that was for 10 months and is effective September 1, 2015. So that added an additional eighty-eight, almost $89,000 uh, to help support the, the budget going forward. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the school revenues, and these revenues were actually not included in the proposed budget, and the reason for that was that we didn't have the exact number at the time that we were putting the budget document together, so instead of you know trying to estimate what it was going to be, we were just going to wait and then adjust that after the fact. So let's talk about what was in the proposed budget for the schools and state revenues. It was $64,000 uh, in new state revenues and then an additional $213,000 for the e-backpack program. So the total amount of state revenues was $277,000. The state budget changes that I just talked about that came through the, the conference report, $445,000 in additional state monies have come forward at this point. They were not included in the proposed budget. So when we add those to what was in the proposed budget, you have $722,000 in new state revenues for the schools. So if we look at the amount of money that we uh, have included on the county side, which is just under $2 million, plus the state $722,000, you're looking at a total increase in new school funds of about $2.7 million. Okay, those are the changes um, with regard to revenue. Part of the budget. We want to stop there for a minute. Are there any questions about the numbers that Mark has presented so far? Back, I'm going to back up one slide just to, 
that's a good summary of the additional revenues that Um, you know those revenues for the compensation increases for locally supported state employees? Who are those employees? Um, they are primarily the uh, Commissioner of the Revenue, the Treasurer, the Sheriff's Office, the Commonwealth Attorney, and the Clerk of the Circuit Court. Okay, so the Constitutional Officers. Who? I can't think of The five Constitutional Officers. Okay. As far as you indicated, as far as the compensation, is that were we factoring in a 2%? You know, we were talking about a 2% raise potentially for our, our county employees. Would we then be able to use these funds uh, instead of using all local funds to, to right. this? That? This is just revenue for us. And so, in us. other words, the starting salaries for all the positions that are listed by the compensation board are significantly below what the county pays. So, any increase in the revenue that we receive by the state is just general fund revenue to us. Okay. So that goes into the general county coffers and then we support other things. Thank you. That, that is a good point because that, that's created some, some questions in the past because when some of the constitutional officers, employees see that, there's an assumption that that's going to come straight through to them. But because they're on the county's pay plan, we already pay them significantly more than the comp board position. This uh, two thirteen six hundred for e backpack program is that already in our budget? Yes. So that's not new money from the state. Well, it's it's new money from the state, um, and the schools can answer that better than I can. But my understanding was last year there was an option of whether or not they were going to do that program, and I believe they did include that program. And so this year, it's not necessarily new state money, and that they can use it for anything. They still have to use it for that e backpack program. topic we're going to talk a little bit about is the the temporary position for proration if you remember back in February the Commission of the Revenue came and spoke to you about the proration of personal property motor vehicles and at that time you guys discussed about adding a full-time position on a temporary basis to analyze the fiscal impact of going to proration um, we did not include a position in the proposed budget because there's a very short time frame for us to address this issue and we needed to have you know complete data to really have an understanding of, of the financial viability of going towards proration um, and so we thought it would be better to start this process immediately rather than waiting until July to address the issue talk a little bit about the time frame for adopting the ordinance ordinance if we want to go to proration October, October 26th, we'd have to schedule a public hearing. On November 23rd, we would hold the public hearing. December 14th, we would approve the ordinance. And then on January 1 of 2016 would become your effective date for going to proration. Um, we will include an appropriation resolution at your next meeting on March 23rd um, if the board would choose to move forward with funding a position for proration. Excuse me, Mark, but you told me uh, how much would this position cost? All right, I'm getting right to it. Oh, all right. So, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so uh, for a full-time temporary position, this would be with no benefits. It could be funded immediately, and it would be terminated on November 30th, 2015, which would provide eight months uh, worth of, of data. The cost of that position would be 20000 just slightly over $20,000. Um, what you guys would want to see in September, um, the commissioner would, would need to provide you with a uh, fiscal impact analysis of the viability of going to proration, um, including an estimate for the ongoing revenue going forward. And then if the ongoing revenues exceed uh, the cost and the board wishes to pursue proration, um, then the temporary position could be funded on a permanent basis and then we would include that in the fiscal year 17 uh, budget. And with that, that concludes uh, the 
topics that I had. If you have any questions, I know you've only had a week to really look at the budget, uh, but if you have any general questions about the budget, I'll be happy to answer them. Has anyone taken a look at uh, DDOT, uh, not the DDOT, but the DMV, uh, about what they might be charging us to collect those taxes rather than? I know that they, they already have, you know, several things, the stickers, and it's all, they know what kind of car is going on, all they have to do is throw on the, an ATA book on it. I think they've got the statutory authority to collect properties real or with they would they would you know, they stay with the you know, they don't have the authority they don't have the statutory authority to collect local revenues. They can collect state revenues, but they don't collect and then over the years they've reduced the number of positions that that they have. That's the reason why you go out there and but I mean just temporarily just looking at this off local office here. I mean I just knew that they were you know, they were doing yeah. some things that uh, we used to do we'll turn every ground. I have one question. Um, did the Human Relations Council not get in their request in time? They did not. We contacted contacted them several times, and we did not receive a request from them. Okay, because I gave them the information back. Yeah, and we uh, we sent them several emails, and they okay. just never responded. All right, I'll try to. See. And I've only had a little bit of time, but I was going through the, the sheriff's compensation. One of the things I've been talking about is potentially using, utilizing inmates um, you know, to help with maintenance in regards to the parks and rec and the like and the trails. Oh, sorry. Um, and, and I've got an ear infection, so I'm trying. I can't really hear very well out of one ear, but uh, I've been looking at that. I did not see that in the budget as far as a new expenditure. Is that part of the sheriff's department was there some discussion and perhaps that didn't make it into the budget and if so is there a possibility we could take a look to see how much that might cost i know that there was some more initial costs about buying some equipment for the inmates that they would have to use uh and, and the like but did it just not make it into the proposed budget because of so many other additional requests <coughs> I believe that's correct. I didn't receive a request for that from the sheriff's office in particular, so this is the first I've heard of it. Okay. Um, I might need to, and, and it, may, it may have not made it through the channels or, or not, but one of the things I would be interested in is looking at the cost of that. Folks, don't know, we even have folks who haven't necessarily been convicted of a crime, they're just not paying their child support, so they get incarcerated. So while that is a fair to bear court order, they have no crimes necessarily it's a civil matter and so if we could utilize those I keep seeing the folks I was over in Giles today watching them clean up around the courthouse and the inmate labor there and I keep thinking can't we do some of the same things that they're doing One thing, Mr. Chair, we would be looking for 
<coughs> is consensus to if the board is willing to do that consensus to have on next week's agenda a resolution to provide the funding that, that Mark mentioned earlier to kick this position off and again it's not guaranteeing a position long term it's funding it on a temporary basis until we have more information to determine whether it's a viable a viable project to continue And I know we didn't have exact revenues, but the revenue productions would, you know, be ten times at least. It's one of the numbers I heard kicked around this position, so I think it's money well spent potentially. Yeah, I think too we 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 kick it off, but we look at the total cost, and the total cost may include this position becoming full time, and also a position in the treasurer's office full time. Mr. Shelton, he may need two positions. But when you total up all that all impact with fringe benefits and everything and you look what it's going to bring in, if it's not if it's if it's a wash, don't do it. Yeah. But if you want to uh, make some additional revenue, then, then you do it. So I think that we have to wait and really be sure when we look at the numbers. And I don't know what Mr. Shelton's going to say to us on next meeting on Monday. Well, the other cost is proration goes both ways. Yeah. If somebody, you know, right now we pay our tax. If we own the car on January 1, we pay full freight. But then if they sell it on January 3rd, then we owe them proration back. And so it works both ways. So you get new cars getting in, but you also got to pay for the ones that are sold. Or sold. So, so currently, we're not sending any refunds back. No. But if we move to proration, we'll be. We will right. have to. Yeah. So, so it goes both ways. So, so if you get more to come in than leave, then. Yeah. That's the only place you're going to make any money is if you charge people that are not being charged now. I mean, that's. That's. that's uh, a tax on everybody that buys a car or has bought a car. And if they haven't bought a more expensive car, then you're you're doomed. But we have consensus to um, support. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 We talked about an agenda review this afternoon. We do have another budget work session on the agenda for next Monday's board meeting. Um, <clears throat> and we can certainly leave that so that if you have additional questions, um, the, uh, in looking at the budget calendar, we'd like to be in a position, uh, we need to be in a position next Monday night, <clears throat> excuse me, after any further discussion to set the advertised budget and tax rate and again that is not what necessarily the budget will be but it's as I call it it's the ceiling for the tax rate and for the, the budget um, so that we can advertise for the public hearing on April the 9th. If you come up if you come up with additional questions during the week um, Feel free to email any of us and we'll accumulate those and try to provide answers. Um, and be glad to help any way we can as you go through the process. Mr. Chair, I just had a couple of quick questions. Um, one just for Mark, actually. Um, just, just so I'm clear on the, your presentation, um, the extra state funds that go into the general fund, your second slot there, we're talking about an extra about $180,000. That's correct. Is that right? So 97 from the restoration or the, the ending of the state flexible cuts and then the, uh, the compensation increases. That's $180,000. And there's no strings attached to that in the state. That's just extra. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the second question is, is I apologize again for not being here next week. for this uh, business trip. Um, one of the things, I haven't had time to go through this with a fine tooth comb, 
um, piece that I was curious about is that we had talked in past years, last year especially, about doing a, uh, a library study. Um, is that included in here? I know that would be a one-time cost, and one of the things we talked about in addition to doing the park study was maybe just using fund balance to carry that out. Is that That's still a possibility? That's still a possibility. Yes. Okay. What kind of, um, since that would just be, would that be something we would wait until the budget's passed to discuss? We, because it, we shouldn't be included in the budget because it's just a one-time expense. <coughs> or it doesn't have to be. We've talked about a study. We've never formally gone out to try to find what an estimate for that would be. Again, if there's consensus among the board for us to pull that number together, we can, that can be done since it would be using one-time money. That can be done any time during the process. So. I'd, I'd at least like to know what we're talking about as far as ballpark for a library and park study for either maybe together. Yeah, we've got the park, the park study is rolling. Yeah, that's rolling. That's right. rolling. We're using the PDC for that because the PDC has done some similar type work. Yeah. I don't think the PDC has ever done a library study. That's going to be a different, probably a different consulting group. Okay. But if there's consensus to find that number, we can certainly do that. Um, I, I would like at least to know, I would at least like to know the numbers that we're talking about for that. And um, I would uh, hope that we can reach out to Floyd County since they're part of the regional library system for this. Uh, not that it's probably going to kind of kick in a lot of money. But. I was going to say that would be difficult. It would be good to know how much it would cost. And then if we decided to pursue it, then we'd be able to, to say to them, hey, you know, look. Because their representative has been coming to the meetings, which has been, and takes an interest in it. So that's a good thing. That's a simple question, and the question becomes, it's been that, so. Yeah, but I, I'd at least like to, to start that conversation and find out how much. I would ask my colleagues to at least allow the staff to gather that information. I don't have, I probably, I mean, as I've said a bunch of times, I'm not a big fan of studies, but at the same time, finding out a number, yeah, uh, that's, good. That's, that's a totally different creature. Sounds good to me. Um, the only other thing I had, and again, I, I apologize, I don't think it's in here from my quick reading of the budget, um, but one of the things that has been an ongoing uh, question for me was about paid parental leave. Um, and I, it's not, it's not, that's not a factor in it. Um, is there, I know we're still kind of waiting for, does, does the study came back right after the first of the year and then Karen Edwards retired? Yeah. So. Um, we we need to re that issue is pending. We need to revisit that and bring it back to the board again. But we need some time to review the information because honestly, that's it's there, but it's not been acted on. Yeah, and, um, I don't remember the exact numbers that Carol presented a while ago. The kind of the rough numbers, but we also do have an extra hundred eighty thousand dollars right now in the budget. Of the so this might be an opportune time to uh, to implement something like this because I remember it, it wasn't it wasn't that much money. It's not extra. It's in the proposed it's budget. It's in the budget. Yes. The yes. only additional monies that were not included were the school funds. Oh. So okay. when you look at this, those dollars have been accounted for. Those dollars have been accounted yes. for. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. I was unclear on my question. Anyway, so now that we're talking about the budget, we still need to revisit that. We still need to revisit that, and that might be a time to, uh, to do that. Do we have a, Carol, do you remember what that rough number was? That was a long time ago. <clears throat> no. I don't remember it being a huge amount of money. I don't remember it being huge either. It was primarily for um, the sheriff's office yeah. um, payment for overtime and Yeah. I have two numbers in my head. I'm, I don't have any faith in either one, so I don't remember the number either. <laughs> Can we maybe have that next week? Sure. Even if it's just bringing back the document that we had sure. before. Okay, thank you. That's, um, that's all I have right now, so I'll probably have more questions next week. <clears throat> okay. Other questions?
Um, we will, if the chair and vice chair agree, we will leave the proposed budget work session on for next Monday night's agenda as well. We'll bring up some of these topics and hopefully if you have an opportunity to develop any other questions between now and then, we'll, we'll go through that as well. Mr. Chair, the second item on the agenda for the work session this evening is a discussion of the Charlottesville Middle School Fields. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark and Angie. Um, this has been an item that we've had several discussions on. And <clears throat> if you recall, when we did our uh, all-day planning session back in January, I said one of the things we really wanted to try to focus on this year was was clarity to try to make sure we understood clearly what the board's intentions were. Uh, this is one that is clarity and also closure <laughs> because we've talked about it several times. And I, I first off, just wanted to briefly uh, remind the board how how we got to where we are with this particular issue. Um, Some time back, uh, probably about this time last year, maybe a little later, the schools approached the county with regard to the fields at the Charlottesville Middle School. Um, the schools were in the process of getting ready to issue bids for the demolition of the annex at the Charlottesville Middle School. And some of the discussion um, as part of that demolition work was that there were some facilities on the middle school uh, fields themselves, bleachers, light poles, um, that the schools didn't have a need for any further and as part of the demolition work they wanted to know if those items could be removed still wanted to retain the fields and, and the track uh, but to remove some of those things and if you recall when we had that discussion at the board level there was concern about removing those items from from that field because of the community use and the, and the desire to keep that those facilities there at that point, what the school uh, discussed was um, because they didn't want the responsibility, liability of uh, having to deal with the bleachers, the, the lights, and other things, they discussed, and they did, the school board took an action to surplus uh, the middle school fields there in front of the middle school to the county. Um, and if you recall, we had a presentation several months ago about the board has never taken an action on whether to accept those fields from the county. And further, if the county did accept those fields, what level of support uh, were we expected to provide? We put a lot of the information that was provided to you um, a couple of months ago in, in the tab that you have this evening under tab A. Um, since that time, we also received some information from the county assessor because one of the questions that came up was, well, if the county were to accept those fields from the schools at some point, would there be an interest in, in selling those fields off for um, future development or use? And um, Carol, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to ask you to help me a little bit, I believe middle school property we determined that the rest of the middle the elementary school yeah there were two questions asked one of which was what could be the estimated value for the elementary school looking at the possible uses in that first page of your tab references the value that um, the county assessor looked at relative to the elementary school. The second um, page in your tab is looking specifically at the parcels at the middle school and estimating what that value would be upon sale. And so as um, <clears throat> Tom has gone through, he said he had reviewed it and Based on his review, he was looking at somewhere around $30,000 an acre. Um, considering the value in the acreage, somewhere around $400,000 up to $35,000 and $400,000. Okay. 
Thank you. So those are the numbers that we received from our from our assessor regarding the value. Now I did want to remind the board that um, as far as the elementary school property, what the consensus, at least staff's recollection, the consensus on the elementary school was to continue to move forward with retaining that property and developing additional fields down there once the school was demolished. Uh, we have not gone to bid or gotten any information for demolishing the school yet. Um, honestly, with, with the technology manufacturing building and the torque projects, I haven't asked Brian to take that on yet, but those, uh, those projects should be wrapping up within the next 60 days. So we were going to go ahead and go out to bid and get a price for demolition of the elementary school so that we can move forward with that property. Um, and then again, the, the value based on um, the tax assessor's review of the, of the fields at the middle school were approximately 400, about $400,000, dollars 400, um, So as far as clarity, that uh, I think I went back to my notes as well. You know, we did ask, um, and we had a conversation, and, and the superintendent's here this evening too, about the use of the field there at the, the middle school. And I believe outside of occasional um, PE, just walking the track, having access to the field, and then using that for emergency evacuation. That's the only uses that you guys have for the field. And I guess to clarify that, but the other properties, there was the expectation that we were going to sell the proceeds and use those either to curtail, to curtail the debt or to set it aside for future construction, as I understand it. With, with this piece of property, the track and the football field, um, it, it was not, there was not an expectation that we would sell that property necessarily. It, it, am I? My understanding, the, the, the basis for the schools, and if I misspeak, just please tell me, but the basis for the schools deciding, the school board deciding to surplus that property is there were concerns from the school board about some of the liability issues related to the bleachers, the lights, and other things, and those are those were uses that the school system doesn't have a use for anymore. They don't use it for those purposes. And so rather than the, the dollars that they receive scarce they didn't want to have to reinvest in that they said you know but if the county wants to maintain that level of use on that field then they were willing to pass that on to the county going back to the Shawsville elementary school and it looks from when i looked at the tab earlier it the building is asbestos use and so it has no value and actually it's a liability and then the property is worth about seventy four thousand dollars and I guess this is to my fellow board members. In my mind, and I know I'm looking at Todd because we weren't part of the board at that point in time, I think we said several times that we would set aside, we would sell these properties and set that money aside. And I guess I would want to reach out to the school board to make sure that there weren't any misunderstandings that we would come up with funds with it from the county reserve to put roughly $74,000 aside as a purchase so then we we're living up to our work. And, and, and that's the way I, I look at it um, before we tear it down and, and, and use it in for the, uh, for the parks and rec department. You are correct uh, uh, in your earlier statements that when we discussed this earlier, you were talking about if we sold it at the public auction, sold it some way, those monies were built to schools. But we're going to retain it for expanding recreation activities. We need to come figure to to go back to them with to them. go back to the school so okay. if they plan to keep it that's it that's it's about to recall of your and, and so i guess it, are we at the point now where we are going to start reaching out to the schools and see it in the school board but on the elementary school yes on the elementary school not on the not on the middle school <coughs> the elementary school's already been surplused well it's been surplus and we've accepted that piece of property but I was just, if I remember from Marty's discussions, that had a specific surplus to us that we were going to sell that property and that the proceeds would either be to 
curtail the debt for future school construction? I don't think we. I don't think we ever. I don't think we ever stated an expected value. Right. No, no. No. Not expected value, but that we were going to. That's what yes, our any, plan. Any frozen, yeah, that's correct. Well, that's okay. that, that's the state law. Is if it, if we sell surplus school properties for any purpose, those revenues have to either go back to pay down school debt or be set aside for future school capital. Um, it's not a state law. I don't never understand where the state law says we got to pay back. People, the people of the county bought that land. The school board didn't. This group didn't. Nobody bought it except the people of this county. There's nothing anywhere that says now that if it turned back over to the people of this county, that we that they have got to pay for it. Now I think that we have given them the money and said here's what it should be paid what should happen to it but that is a bad wrong state well I, I think the difference is if, if we sell it so not keep it then we do have to use those proceeds and stuff if we keep it for the county use then technically under most we don't legally have to do that but morally if we if we tell somebody we're going to do this that, that we're putting our word out there and we need to live up to our obligations. Well, I, I, know, I know for sure we did, we did say that in the resolution that we adopted. I was thinking it was law. I'll go double check. Mm -hmm. It is. I want somebody to show it to me. I haven't looked at it in a while, but there is language in there that talks about um, that the way it works is that I think, I'll double check, but I think the statute says something about they give it to you to sell, then you can then agree that they can ask for the money back and uh, from the pro from the proceeds, um, and the board can say yay or nay on that. If the board says yay, then that money can only be used for um, capital and uh, large maintenance projects yeah, that, that comes under capital. But I'll, I'll double check that. But there is something that is on that, that, that the resolution true. did ask for. So be able to use that money for that purpose. Yeah, and I do agree with you that if it's if if the county decides to retain it for whatever reason, there doesn't have there doesn't have to be compensation. But you know the wise thing to do, whether it's here, there, or anywhere else, is if you don't hold on to that property there now whether it's school board holding on to it or whether we hold it on for them. Which piece are you talking about? Yeah. The elementary school. Yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. The elementary school. Yeah. Elementary school. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. If we do not hold on to that, then that's assuming, and that's a big assumption that you're never going to need any additional schooling for your schools that are already set up. I, I don't think we can build a school. No, I just... Can you build a school in a what? I don't think it'd be wise. It's in a flood zone. We're not talking about that piece of property. Yeah, oh, we're talking about elementary, elementary. Not, I'm not talking about the, the elementary school. Not, right. not the elementary, but the... Okay, because I'd ask you on the elementary school. Middle 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 school. Again, the elementary school has been surplus. The county has received it. Consensus from the board was that we were going, that the county was going to retain that property, take the old school down, and use that for future parks and recreation development. Right. And that, that was the consensus. The one piece that we needed to get as far as clarity and closure, I guess, was the discussion that Supervisor Tuck brought up about as we move forward with the removal of the elementary school and the future redevelopment of that land, does the board, is there an obligation, does the board believe there's an obligation to provide any funding to the schools for retaining that property? I agree with Chris. I think it's a good faith <coughs> part of the board to value just the straight value of the land to put that into the reserve for future capital needs for the, for the schools. So, $74,700, $74,700. Yeah. 
and I, and I guarantee you that I, I absolutely agree with that. But it's the other school that I'm going to look at. That. <laughs> uh, anybody have any estimates on the demolition of the old elementary school? Any ballpark figures or the, whatever? The number that um, Brian mentioned. Chair, I want to say between 200 and 250,000. It may not be that much. It's a one-level school. There's not, to our knowledge, we'll have to do a, an assessment. There's not. We don't have the asbestos and lead issues in that building that we do in a lot of the older buildings. Um, and I, I think that's the number that he and I talked about, but I honestly can't remember. Well, it probably cost you about as much to. Refurbish or, or to not to refurbish, but it would cost as much to tear that building down and make it all flat ground down there. It will cost as much there as it's worth. I think it will probably, probably cost more, more, probably more than it's worth. Most yeah, likely, yes, more than yes, it's the, the, And we are, we. I've left the power on there just to keep some very minimal temperature controls to keep pipes from bursting or, or to keep it from getting too hot. Um, but that's running us about $1,500 a month. And what Brian and I have talked about is as soon as he can, going out and getting estimates so we can come back to you guys to get that thing taken down and, and get that off the books. Still got another, I don't know, with an acre to somewhere between an acre and two acres of land that I can get donated to help the parking to make we've, it even a bigger piece. We've had, some, we've had a request for use of the building too, but we, uh, again, we, we are not maintaining anything in that building other than just making sure stuff doesn't get broken. Um, and so we, we're not allowing any use. It's really not, I haven't been in the building in a couple of months, but it, it amazes me how quickly those buildings start to go down as soon as you quit using them. Um, if you want an example of that, you look at the old Blacksburg High School too, it's just falling apart. But. So with, with what I'm looking at, so with, say, putting about $75,000 for the land and between 250 and 275 we would be out roughly about three, yeah, about $350,000. I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> is it, if it's worth $75,000 or whatever, you're saying put that aside for the school projects? Yeah. Plus, yeah. Like we, plus, we pay you to tear the school down. Yeah, the, the, yes, and, and the set, let's say 75, the 75,000 would be the county's reimbursement to the schools for the land that we're keeping to, to do future development on. The money we spend to take the school down and, and, and level will basically be an investment in, in recreation to get some additional fields that are constructed down there. So, if, yes, we're going to spend money to tear the building down. We're going to spend more money than what it's worth. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the other, yes, we are. The other option. We're not going to spend more money than it's worth. We're going to spend. What you say? No. It's, it would be, if we try to refurbish it, it would cost us more than just tearing it down. So we're taking the less expensive option by tearing the thing down, making it ready for the schools. And I'm oh, sorry, making it ready for parks and rec. Right, parks and rec. And, and I don't see industry really seeking out that. If you're surrounded by a flood zone, if, let's say we wanted to put it up for sale and not develop the ball fields. I, I have been out there with my son where the, the river was running and you couldn't get to the school because there, you were cut off. Um, you couldn't go across the road. And so I don't know that many industries, and, and that's what I guess the only thing that I don't Plus know. the property would have to be rezoned in the residence. Now I'm sure that, that would be an interesting rezoning. So I, I just don't see us being able to sell this building and making money off of it to be able to turn over to the schools. I may be wrong, but this where the, the Elliston Lafayette was right on 460, it's convenient. You can see how commuters might, and it, Shaw Development, I guess, ended up buying it. They could see that they could make money off that. 
I just see the school as being, we, even if we auction it, it, it's not going to bring the money that we're going to want to see. And we're going to want ball fields down there for the kids. So, because we've well, already yeah, invested the, with the, the two the, ball fields. The <coughs> couple of things that, that uh, are wrong down there, one is the PSA, the sewage plant is right adjoining on the rear there. Uh, four kids that yeah, they got the very least ones of the kids back there playing. <laughs> and, but, and it's it's not real nice place to be playing ball or not or doing anything else. So, you know, it just... Are you saying that there's not a demand to build houses next to a sewage treatment plant? That would be in a flood zone. Yeah. <laughs> there's only two acres now. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one of the staff's recommendations all along. That's has been what to build and that yeah. property yeah. for recreation because there's really not much of anything else you can do with it. I did want to turn it off. It's built to come down. I mean, just why are we paying $1,500 a month to keep lights and stuff on? Well, we, because we didn't have an absolute gas tear the building down. And that's one thing I wanted to, when I said closure, I wanted to make sure tonight we all agree. Because we didn't, you know, we didn't want things to break or create additional damage to the building. Because one thing as well is, when we put it out to bid for demolition, you know, I don't know what value the materials are in the building. Sometimes you can get a demolition contractor that will give you a pretty low bid because he's going to recycle a whole lot of stuff from the building. So we didn't want to mess the, we didn't want the building to get messed up before we tore it down. I know that sounds crazy, but that's. That's right. That's what happened to the old Blacksburg Middle School. They used to spend so much money on it, the money got tight, then they cut it out of the budget, and then it just went on down. Mr. Chair, I guess before we drive back up 460 to the middle school property, is there, can I see if there's a consensus to determine a set amount of money to set aside for the schools and then have consensus to go ahead and have Brian start getting estimates for taking the building down? I don't think so. I mean, ain't gonna happen if you don't start. Um, you mean if it's 85 is what it, they say it's worth? That's based on the our tax assessor's estimate of, of the land. Now, you know, we could hire three appraisal firms and probably get two or three different numbers, but and that appraisal is going to cost you $5,000. I, I just got problems spending more money on something work. Well, and I guess Todd, I'm looking at this, and, and I don't think you're going to work. Initially, Gary and I, I think I don't have to be on board for 30 years. Uh, right, right. And, and we put on uh, a couple of years back, we looked at maybe even putting the, the animal facility there. That vote didn't pass, and, and that wasn't something that was accepted. So. There's not a lot of things to do with it, and if we sell it, we might get. Let's say we got a hundred thousand dollars out of the property, the as is the way it is. Then we're going to be looking. We've got ball fields that we've already built, and they're already in existence. And, and so you're, you're, yes, you're, you're going against it. So we're, we would be looking for a place to have ball fields. Again. Yeah. So and we just spent four hundred thousand out towards Reiner out at the Sheeler uh, for that Sheeler Park. Now it's not in Reiner, but it's it's out at, at the That's Radford exit. Right. Right. Um, and, and and so when you start looking at flat pieces of land in this kind of around here, they're easily accessible and the like. It makes it a lot more difficult. And so I know what we're saying about the school board to me and giving that money, but that follows down to me is is trying to, to live up to our word. Technically, do I know that we're going to end up spending more money on this thing? What you're saying, yes, we are, but we're getting something back for it. And, and the assessed value on the building, if it was, if we were going to use it, is what, 400,000? Yeah, but we'd have to spend half that. It would just just be a bit bit. If we were going to, yeah. so the building, I guess, it has some value. I, I know, I know what you're saying. If what you're saying is if we went out to buy a piece of land for Parks and Rec, we would be paying a lot more than $125,000 for it. 
so in the long run, it pays to take what you've got and work with that. If there's only $250,000 plus $75,000, it's $300,000. No, I'm just thinking that you all said you said five for the land yeah. for a coffee. Yeah. But if but you go up to buy some land, it, it would be pretty tough to do that. And in this county, down there. And then trying to get the zoning changed um, for that piece of property to make it valuable. You're going to have two acres that you're going to be able to build on. I, don't, I forgot what it cost us to tear down the Shellsville Lafayette, but was it 180? Is that the number? I'm thinking it's 180, but I, I, think, it, I don't think it was that much. I, it was less than 100. I'm thinking less than 100. Okay. Maybe I'm <laughs> and, and as I'm sitting here, I'm 250,000, I think, is high for tearing it down. It'd probably be less than that, but I'd rather tell you 250. It'd be 100 than tell you 100. It'd be 250. Um, but but again, we haven't even gone out to price that yet because we just had, I said clarity and closure. We need to get closure and move this one on and then that way we can talk about what we're going to do with middle school as well. So, I, I mean, I understand your concerns. Yeah. I, I do. There is a concern. We need to consensus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got consensus too. We'll develop a resolution to appropriate seventy-five thousand to the reserve to cover the land, and then we'll get Brian working on the number for demolition, and I'll get back to you. Uh, let's let's drive back up the street to the middle school field. Okay. Um, the, the the two questions I guess we need resolved are there was there was discussion at the last meeting. I, I don't know if it was consensus, but there was discussion that the board would accept the conveyance of the property. But then there was a lot of discussion about were we going to turn it into more of a community athletic field use or were we going to move forward with trying to sell the property? And that's where staff had a lot of confusion and questions. So, Craig, is that, is that the file right there for me? Picture up. Yeah. With the. Thank you. Thank you. Did Mr. Boyle? Did you ever get in contact with Mr. Boyle about the soccer thing he was talking about? I did. Well, we've traded. We've traded uh, voice messages. He was asking about the elementary school. Okay. And and I told him at this point we had progressed. So. One of the questions I had from Ms. Blackburn was, were the schools asking us to to maintain the field but keep it? for uh, evacuation purposes because when she made that presentation and it, it's been several months ago i recall her saying that that the only purpose that they would need the field was for evacuation purposes from the schools and so i guess in and, and i guess maybe now occasional recreation situations is that Correct? Am I, do, I, do I recall correctly? Do you want me to add? If you don't mind, thank you. We appreciate you sticking around for this. <laughs> if you can hear. The school board wanted to demolish the structures on that parcel of the property because they are a maintenance and a liability issue for the school system. So when we were unable to reach agreement that the county would support the removal of the structures, then our offer was for you to take the property and maintain it. That's what you want, it to be a community property. It's not appropriate for commercial development. It would not be appropriate for new residential development because of its very close proximity to the actual school and the playing fields. The school, the area that we wanted to demolish the structures is used for two reasons by the school. It's used as an evac a point of evacuation when we do uh, evacuate the building and go out. And it's also used occasionally by the PE classes to walk the track. And we would have had it flat level. The track would have remained and it would have still been accessible for the evacuation site for the group of students, about 300, 250 that attend the school day. So it's, 
like a, a conflict in terms of use. The county, meaning Board of Supervisors from my perspective, wanted to maintain those recreational structures despite the fact that they were no longer needed by the school system and carry a liability cost. But where will the kids walk around the track if it's no longer available? Well, my, my request to the supervisors was that we be allowed to continue to have use of that track and that we could use it as a point of evacuation because I thought you wanted to preserve the structures and use them for the community, not that you wanted to sell it and turn it into commercial or other residential usage. And when you're saying the structures, the bleachers, the lights, uh, there's a concession stand. And a ticket booth. And a ticket booth. Uh, the, and the tennis courts. And the tennis courts, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, uh, one question. If, if you don't have this, where's the kids going to evacuate? Well, the school board's request to the supervisors was that the supervisors allow the students and the school to continue to have access for an evacuation point and for walking that track. That was, yeah, that was part of the conveyance if, if the, the county letter. were to accept it. Yeah, the Just one question, do y'all need it? I mean. We, we are happy to keep the property. We don't want to pay to keep up the lights and the bleachers and the um, concession stand and the ticket booth. We wanted to level those and make it more applicable to our needs. However, there appears to be some community need for those structures. But I don't need to pay to keep them up for the community. I need to pay my limited maintenance dollars to take care of the parts of the facility that are actually used by the school. Great. Yeah, and you know, the good thing about this whole thing is, and we kind of went over this back the last time when we were talking about it, is the fact that we can have someone that will keep it up, will keep the grass mowed, will keep everything Hunky dory, the the uh, tennis courts back up to somewhat something that they at least can play on, uh, and they will do this, guaranteeing the schools will have a place at any time that they want it to go and evacuate to, or to if they want to have a get down the side, they want to have a, a softball game or whatever. They, they can get that. Anything that they want, that they will give this group a notice of, you know, except you know the notice wouldn't be needing to need to be there on something for evacuation or something. Uh, just if it was going to be a full school thing that uh, they just decided we'd like to have a picnic over there or whatever, that. They would need some, some time, you know, a week, two weeks, or 10 days, or maybe two days. I, you know, just to call them and, and see at that point in time. But we would have somebody there that would do that. And I say we because I consider myself part of Eastern Montgomery County, not part of these people that are going to uh, Mountain Valley, you know, going to come in and do that. And Mountain Valley has a very good record with the county as being somebody that will do what they say they will do. They will do it on time and they will do it better than probably what they thought they were going to do when they started out. So with that said, you know, it can be kept up and it can be fixed into a five year or 10 year or 20 year or 50 year lease and they will accept either one. Now, the thing that we need to know is, and, and the big thing that's, that's always riding on your shoulders is, what if we need that for a school eventually or something to that nature? Well, because it would be broke up, in my estimation, to break it on five-year intervals, 
either party having the right to withdraw on a five-year animal, and, and, you, and you've got it to where the, if it needs to be a school, it can be a school in a hurry. How many acres? 14, I'm sorry, 11.5. Well, you know, last week or, or two weeks ago, uh, Mr. Brown made a suggestion that we actually put the rescue squad there on the old, or the old building that they just tore down. And I thought that was a, a great use of means that they are needing them or going in. Right. That would be, you know, that would be a, a future site. It might be 15 years before it's you know, built or something like this, but. What I understand now, where they said it, they in the floodplain, they yeah. can't expand or do anything. The structure's getting old, and, and they have the meetings upstairs. Some of their members, it's a struggle for them to get up to the meetings yeah. and so forth. Okay. Uh, and uh, when you look at this, and, and getting back to people taking care of it, Gary, what I think about too is people may take care of it and, and so forth, but when light poles need to be replaced, where are they going to come and get them replaced? To us. If the roofs need to be put on the shelters and things down there that's, that's in our particular booth or whatever that was mentioned, um, they're going to come to us. I don't think so, Bill. Let me say, I know that the the concession stand, yeah. it wasn't built by us. It was built by the citizens. It was built there. by the citizens, but every it, ounce of of it. it became ours. So every, every ounce of it. Those, those poles down there, it didn't become us. I got the money up to have every nickel of it to put every one of them in. But they're not going to sue you if a pole, pole fall down on somebody that's inadequate. They're going to come after the county because I, who put it up there? I don't see where they're inadequate. Yeah. Uh, Marty, can we write any agreement um, if we were to agree with something about the valley that they would assume all maintenance costs, future and ongoing? including the replacement as needed, as determined by um, county inspectors, building inspectors, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we could write that agreement. That sounds good. Right? And they would they would assume all liability as well, in case, God forbid, something happened. Yeah, and, and they would insure it. They would, they would be responsible for insuring it. If nothing else, if, they, if it happens, if, if they have to put it on or take them up within the first year or two, they're probably not going to have the money to do that. So, it, they should have the right to be able to take them down and leave them down until they have to back right. That's fine. I mean, I think they they agree with about anything we do, but you got to get across the first step first. Well, the first step, I guess, is for us to accept. The, the yeah, what I'm what I'm hearing is the first step would be we need to we need to have a resolution to accept the school boards recommendation of conveyance and I'll offer to accept the property and then the second step is to develop an agreement with Mount Valley Charitable Foundation for the maintenance maintenance operation and upkeep of the property with the understanding that the schools have access to the property as well. Am I remembering the transfer? I skip that step. Yeah. Am I remembering am I remembering correction we have a separate agreement for the baseball field with baseball field. Yeah, 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 we own that. Yeah, we, we own that, but it's being maintained by uh, Mr. Yeah. Sisson. Is it Day Spring? Is it? It's Day Spring. What, what, what we're doing, just to give you an update in that, we, we got we have that property, we have the um, old high school property, we have the interior and the track that the cross is going to see used. We have the softball field that Dixie Rec Leagues and some travel teams that are in our community want to use. And then the baseball field is actually, it looks like it's going to be used by the high school again. Because the, the new high school field is um, it's taking a little while to mature grass wise, um, and so what what we've done is we've um, we got groups that are entering into <coughs> field use agreements to actually control those and uh, be in charge of maintenance and take care of all the property, and also if any other groups want to get on it, they're going to actually go through them. Um, and so the one group that's doing the baseball field at the high school, Bill High School, is brewing the baseball LLC. It's a group of parents that have been maintaining that field for a few years now anyway, and so they'll be insuring it, 
that we put in all the work and labor. We're not spending anything other than to get to use it for free. Uh, if the community want the community team wants to use it, they'll go through them and not charge them. However, we, we did say they could have tournaments there for outside teams and charge them, but it's got to be a rate that's intended to recoup the maintenance cost, not the not the um, And with this bill, we're sending the same use agreement to. It was sent to Day Spring with the same terms that they, they will be in charge of the speed If anyone else wants to use it, uh, they're, they're the ones who would schedule it. They're in charge of maintaining it. We're not charging them anything. We're um, additional insured, so right. they have to cover the chunk. Yeah, they, they have to do insurance make us. But the thing is, there's it's a it's an annual thing. We're not so promising anything more than that season. Yeah. Uh, but it's it, but all, it's a written, <coughs> we can both agree to mutually extend it. There's an out where if we're going to sell that property, then we can terminate it within 30 days. Other than that, we can only terminate it at the end of the season. End of the season is November 15th. That's what's going to happen. And, that, and that's actually to the county's benefit because, especially with the old high school property, that, that, that property was fairly expensive to keep maintained and mowed. And these guys have said, look, if you'll let us use it, we'll keep it up. And, and I want to I wanna thank Marty because <laughs> Marty's got enough on his plate as well, but Marty's basically drafted these agreements with these outside agencies to, to be able to do that, and that's... Um, well, it, it's know. important, because I, mean, I, I know almost all these people that are doing this, and, and, and the schools have been a great help with those fields too, but I mean, they're, they're used every day. Yeah, and we just, we, the, the Parks and Recreation staff, you know, there was some discussion about, you know, trying to run it off through Parks and Recreation, but you... Yeah. I mean, they have hard enough time keeping up with the fields. We already are responsible for programming and maintaining. So, uh, basically, just like with that baseball field, <coughs> saying, "All right, day spring, that that's your field. We have contract with you. You maintain it. You keep it up. You insure us." And, and day spring was just a month. Yeah, you know, Doug says he's the coach. Okay, and something just just for knowledge. Uh, they only use that field about three months of the year. Right. They don't go into spring. Once they, they're the, uh, the, that's, that's the church season. group, and that's what they want is, is it for, as a matter of fact, they're down and playing tonight. Yeah. Uh, when I come up the road, they were out there getting it. So uh, that's something that someone else could get on there as a rider and, and help uh, make that thing really shine. I would be okay with pursuing this. I would for the the other part of the property that we're talking about right now. Um, is there a way that we could write in that the county parks would have priority for scheduling that? Yeah. Which one are you talking about? The baseball field? Or no, the the big field, the track the field, yeah. Or or the schools, for example, or something. Yeah. Like that. You, you don't want it. Well, no, but no. sometimes the schools are going to talk about you. So they would they would have a priority, and then the county, and then. Yeah, I mean, you, you could write in saying that the, 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 the every year it's whatever time would be appropriate. Contact Parks and Rec. See, do you have a user for scheduling? Yeah, because it's all community use. That's the right. Parks use. And so I don't see where that would be a problem. I know the lacrosse club uses that field. Lacrosse, and that's some of those coming out of Ronald and Sidon, different places all around. around. Yeah, we got a, re a request from across to use the old middle school, Blacksburg Middle School field too. But our position on the old middle school field, unless y'all tell me otherwise, has been yeah. we're actively marketing that. It's currently up the back is under contract, and we're not going to open that up for public use. No, um, we spent a lot of money getting that down, yeah. looking yeah. the way it does. And it had been. They're talking about the old Bill Brown Stadium area, and that's all been torn down. That's, that hadn't been operated as many people well anymore. Have some real these are all the issues, issues on that. Ongoing. My dad's coach, not this Bill Brown, but. So now, when do we have some discussion about that we didn't have enough people in Parks and Rec to schedule things on that property, or did I dream that? No, we don't, so I'm doing it. But that's the thing about it. We didn't, we didn't want well, Nancy yeah, people calling parks and recreation 
to schedule events on the RC can we get the field because it just expands their workload but, I'm trying to but if we do this like we're talking about right. that's what would happen okay, then. Right. No, but, wait, you know, who are they going to contact? Mountain Valley? Mountain Valley. Oh, no. Mountain Valley. Yeah, Mountain Valley. Valley. And, and that's what we've done with these other fields. We're saying, okay. through a baseball, you need to, if, if someone wants to get out of there, like the Virginia yeah. Tech baseball club plays or something, and then they need to go through room, not through me. But if there's a problem, then I'll mediate. Um, okay. Gotcha. Same thing with the softball and the, the interior drive. This one would be, this one may end up being a little different. Talking about the baseball field. Yeah. Yeah, now, that baseball field up there, they he told me that three months will absolutely get him in and yeah, out. He's in the fall. And and in the fall all they do is work on the field, but they work on the field. You're around whether they're in there or not. So well, and, and <laughs> I think the camp at least I think the position should be if they're expending their energy and effort to maintain and keep that field out, if he wants to have a tournament there or whatever, that's up to him. I mean, yeah. that's absolutely he charged. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. again, he's, he's maintaining the fields for us, which saves us money. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he should have that right as long as it doesn't hinder any other that's citizen right. that might, or a group of citizens that may want to have an hour too. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I just what I'm hearing on the middle school site, I just want to make sure so we can have clarity and closure, as I said, is uh, if the board is willing to accept the conveyance of the field from the schools, uh, the second step would be to receive title for the property so that it would become the property of the county. And while all that's going on, we can also begin to develop an agreement with Mountain Valley Charitable Foundation for the operation, maintenance, and upkeep of the field. Is that consensus? I, get, I think Carol brings up a good point. Should we just start discussions with Mountain Valley and make sure we can actually mm -hmm. negotiate an agreement before we take it? Is the law bill the there? No, I mean right now. Uh, right now it's the school. Well, they told me as late as we haven't taken it. Well, I mean, if we accept it, it, it makes sense. It, 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 it makes sense to get uh, a consensus from them yeah. that they're going to do this before we say, yeah, we want it. We might get it, and it's no, we don't want to take it. We might want to go it. ahead and, and get the the actual paper and just don't turn it in yet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the understanding. This is the term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? They might want to negotiate a little bit. That's something they agree with. Oh, everybody uh, likes to negotiate. Thank, thank you for your help with that. I know we, we try not to bring stuff back to you guys any more than we need to, but that one's been one that's been a little bit confusing. If we're going to, um, I hate to complicate things, but being that we just put $75,000 into the school coffers for another property, I mean, should we be talking about fair use transferring that money for this property since now this, this is also staying with Parks and Rec's? Yeah, but they're but, using it. But yeah. they're, they are asking us to not sell this. Right. That's the reason I asked that question. They're saying, don't sell this piece of property. We still need it. They're saying with this, the, the Shelter Elementary School, sell this piece of property and, and give us the money. Right. That's why I don't understand. If they still need it, why are they giving it to us? Because, because they don't want to maintain the buildings. It. Like their, their idea the was that, yeah, they just wow. did not want to maintain those buildings that are a liability. <laughs> Well, the, the community doesn't want them to turn into them. These are on the ground, so they don't have any builders that Yeah, they want to have a corner. No, they're so talking about the concession stand, the bleachers, yeah. our yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. 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 And the tennis courts. Yeah, that's like part of that building. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And, and Dr. Smith down there is the one that, that brought it up uh, on one of my rides over to the tech to watch them play ball. Uh, where they just got through tearing down the little school, he would like to take that area and have a garden on these gardens for you. Assigned areas. Community on garden. Community garden. What? Why do they the Oh, you mean that that little piece that's up there? Yeah, you know, they actually put good topsoil back on top of that thing. And he said, you know, there's enough four people around here that if we could sign them a place to get up the garden, they would do it. Well, that would be up the Mountain Valley, wouldn't it? Because if we're maintaining it, they, it's, that's their decision. Well, and I hadn't heard that brought into Mountain Valley, but that would be, a, if that's Mountain Valley, it certainly would, would be a good thing they could make their own decision if you were going to want to. That would be a good idea to pitch to one. It, it would help some of these older folks that don't have living parks. And, and then it helped them around the gardens and things, help keep that clean and yeah. uh, maintain that would be up to the that would be up valley. Up. Yeah. Are we uh, okay on the properties? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Make a motion to go out of work session. Second. Third. Have a motion and a second go to work session. The clerk please call the roll. Supervisor King. Supervisor Biggs. Aye. Ms. Perkins is absent for the vote. Supervisor Tuck? Aye. Supervisor Gabriel? Aye. Supervisor Cree? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six eyes. I don't know how you count Annette when just Annette's absent. Just absent. Yeah. Left, left the table. Temporarily. Mm -hmm. Now, um, next order of business is to go into closed meeting, be it resolved, or supervisors hereby enter into the closed meeting for the purpose of discussing the following. Section 2.23711 discussion or consideration of acquisition of real property for public purpose or the disposition of publicly held property for discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body and that would be Allegheny Spring Green Box site. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Second. Second. I have a motion to second to <coughs> close meeting. Would the clerk please call the roll? Supervisor Biggs? Aye. Supervisor Perkins is absent. Supervisor Tuck? Aye. Supervisor Gabriel? Aye. Supervisor Creed? Yeah. Supervisor King? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six eyes. We're in the work session.